Okay, so hi everybody, my name's Simon Pimenta and I am here today with Rob Salter. Hello Rob. Hi, how are you doing? I'm very good. So just if people don't know, Rob, we started working together in April 2017. You had MECFS. We did an interview the following year in 2018 where you talked about your recovery from MECFS. Quite a lot's happened since then, including you getting long COVID. So I thought it'd be interesting yeah. just to have another conversation with you, especially sure. because of where you are now in terms of your physical ability and physical activity. So fill us in, Rob. You, um, as I say, we did an interview in April 2018. Yeah. Tell us what's happened since then. So we spoke in, so that was about a year after we'd started working. I was like completely symptom free. I was exercising to a high level, much more, but in the same, but by the same regard, I was kind of very content doing nothing as well. And just like, you know, kind of relaxed in terms of where I was at and quite pretty content. And then um, I was also learning, relearning to drive at the time in London, which is probably not the most calming experience. Yeah. So combining that, yeah. So combining that with um, a busy job, and then also I was in the process of looking to move north um, I subsequently moved to Carlisle and I think a lot of those things combined and I had a bit of a setback effectively would have been June time not a kind of you know full drop off but I, I had a lot of the symptoms returned and I got very very frustrated it was almost like oh this isn't meant to happen like you know I can't you know once you recover you recover and actually you know looking back really it was a case of um I'd just gone away from the things which had made me relax and feel better, which had got rid of symptoms. Yeah. So, but it took me a while to kind of come to terms with that, which looking back doesn't, it's, it's kind of seems a bit silly really. But anyway, so I moved to Carlisle. Um, I was in Carlisle for a year. I was fair, pretty healthy, holding down a job. I was kind of exercising, walking on the hills in the Lake District, but I wasn't really getting the consistency with exercise and, uh, you know and then you know eventually then moved back to Newcastle and um you know where I've kind of probably because I feel more relaxed here as well but I've managed to to push on really in the last I suppose the last 18 months I've really managed to get back to where I would say where I was in 2018 but with just much more consistency right um so it's been you know it's been a learning process but I think you know I had a lot of frustration after that kind of blip well it was initial a blip in June 2018 I was kind of just off for a while really and I was like well this is ridiculous I've invested all kind of daft like you know I've invested all this time and energy into this and um you know was telling myself it was just getting wound up when I didn't need to get wound up because actually I'd already recovered anyway so to just stop worrying about it but I think it was just probably a process I had to go through I was just a bit dejected and but yeah, so so that's that's where I was. And then really, I mean, I was still active when I came back to Newcastle and was doing kind of ex patchy exercise, no problems with with any symptoms in the day at all. But then really in the last 18 months, I suppose I've probably got back to, I would say, pre-chronic fatigue training levels. Right. Um, which is what, 2014, in terms of like, you know, six days a week training. Not that that's all that I do. I'm kind of equally happy going for a walk now. I don't have to go out and knacker myself with exercise. I'm just training a lot at the moment because I have some races going on in the yeah, yeah, Leighton yeah. Fells. It's just one of those kind of niche, bizarre niche interests of, you know, running up and down mountains through bog and rock and yeah. then running down them even, even faster and trying not to fall over. So I, that's why I'm training a lot. But I think obviously my mentality is such that I don't have to push it all the time. I can go to the lakes and go to, for a nice walk in the valley and look at things. And I can go for a walk around here and just enjoy things and switch off. Whereas I never used to be able to do that. It was much more, it was more about pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah. And, and at the beginning of this little video, um, you kind of said that there's more contentment. And yeah, what, totally. what people might not understand from that comment, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it sounded like before you had that kind of overachiever oh, kind completely. Of approach, whereas now you're 
much more able to just gauge what's appropriate at any given time. Um, yeah, I mean, I used to go to pre chronic fatigue. I think I probably used to go somewhere like the Lake District and treat it like a bit of a kind of training camp. You know, everything would have to be full on massive long walks, long runs. Whereas now I kind of I might take my running shoes, fell running shoes, but I'll take my walking boots. I might do a little bit. I might do a lot. I might just go for a stroll in the valley. I'm kind of, and you know, when you you're just in much more of a, a relaxed state, really, because you just appreciate different things, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and and we'll come back to the kind of you know physical activity you're doing, uh, what's going on at the moment. But let's go back because you you told me that in April 2020 you developed COVID that went into long COVID. Tell us a bit about that. How was it different to having MECFS? Yes, so that was quite a strange experience because actually I was, even though at the end of 2021, when, sorry, end of 2020 when I'd recovered from on COVID, I did a bit of a review about how to fully maximise exercise potential. I had been doing a bit of running and, and I was basically pretty fit and healthy. And I'd actually been redeployed onto the hospital wards to work in the, in the pandemic. So I'd been moved from my role as a physio in outpatients, which is essentially post-operative, you know, where you go in to see a physio and you, you're at various stages of recovery after surgery or whatever. So I was moved from an outpatient setting to an inpatient setting, which was great at first because I was back on the ward at the Freeman in Newcastle, working with old like uni friends I'd studied with. I have a friend who's a nurse specialist on one of the wards, I, I, you know, and so it was great. And then I got COVID and it was pretty obvious that, I mean, I had a test and I suppose I had like kind of mild to moderate flu for about two, three weeks. And then I developed all sorts of weird symptoms, like I had a full peripheral neuropathy, which is basically pins and needles and numbness in the feet and hands. I had um, about six weeks of so the way I would just I was actually on five live talking to Nikki Campbell about it because they'd asked for people to call in so so I said that I'd had chronic fatigue ME or a version of it as I as I always say I've always had a, I say I've had a version of it because I think there's different levels and types of symptoms yeah. for me that um I don't think I got I don't I didn't I don't feel I was very stressed at the time whereas so I think my chronic fatigue ME was as directly related to various persistent stress over the years whereas um Covid for me was felt kind of more biomedical. Like I got this virus. The symptoms were different in the sense that I didn't have any brain fog. I had this peripheral neuropathy, which went on for about I suppose six to eight weeks. And um, just explain what that is to someone who doesn't. Know. So basically, like a sense of weakness in the hands and feet, um, pins and needles in the pins and needles in the arms and legs. Actually, some in the body as well. I think it was like a response of the nerves to the actual virus itself. I mean, I did have some altered sensation in the early days of chronic fatigue, but nothing on this, this level. Um, but I had really, really, I guess, the type of symptoms which people would have with chronic fatigue. Very, very heavy fatigue where I, I really, I couldn't walk for about four or five weeks. I couldn't walk more for more than about five to 10 minutes. So I was getting kind of, I was going for some acupuncture in, Heaton, which is about, I suppose, probably 20 minute walk away. There was no way I'd be able to walk that at all. And even when I had chronic fatigue, even when I was really run down, I could, I could still walk, even though I had kind of muscle ache and brain fog and nausea and all the, I could still walk places. I didn't have that. It was, it was like a different kind of fatigue for me. So the, the, the fatigue with long COVID was, was different. It felt, the limbs felt much heavier. I mean, I still had some of that when I had chronic fatigue, but I just didn't have any brain fog with COVID. It was just a really, really heavy fatigue where I just didn't have any energy to do anything. Whereas the chronic fatigue, it's hard to describe really, the, the chronic fatigue had all sorts of other really weird and wonderful symptoms of which like I wrote them down in yeah. 2015. There's a whole myriad of stuff. So they were just very different. Like I didn't have, I had terrible brain fog with chronic fatigue. I didn't have any brain fog with long COVID, yeah. but I essentially used the same i mean i essentially told myself well look if you put yourself in a in a kind of relaxed state and and just you know exercise or go for a walk when you can and do a little bit don't try and do too much and use a lot of the same principles it's not going to it's not going to harm you it's only going to benefit you so 
yeah, luckily I was able to to kind of recover. That took about so it was April, May, June, July, probably four or five months, probably four months. By the end of the fourth month, getting on for the fifth month, I was kind of getting back to normal. So it was a, more like a kind of viral fatigue for me. Yeah, yeah. I was able to kind of bounce back from it, really. Yeah. And actually, I, I literally made a, a video about that this week, talking about the fact, um, and I've seen a few doctors, including doctors who've had long COVID, talk about this, saying that one of the mistakes that they made was trying to do too much. Yeah, too no, totally. And, and it's just hard for people to gauge, you know, how much you can do when you're recovering from a viral condition like long COVID. And actually, it kind of reminds me of when I had glandular fever prior, many years before I yeah, got MECFS. Yeah. And I, I was definitely kind of just burning the candles both ends. I was, do, I was on a student placement and I also had a part time job working in a restaurant. So I was yeah, yeah, yeah. riding back home on <laughs> the... Um, um north circular at one in the morning or or something like that and i just wasn't getting enough sleep no no exactly. and i developed glandular fever and you know i was it was it was um tricky because i wanted to go to work on summer camp in america but i had to get well and that i got well by just really mm. cutting right mm. back but anyway that's but the point is you know i just want to really stress this point that um one of the things that can really get in the way is if people try and do too much too soon and the approach there's there's certain strategies that i think are really helpful and one is to kind of test and measure very gently do a bit see how your body responds yeah exactly you know um and if, rather if you than need to rest just rest yeah absolutely you know and that's again something that some people it's quite alien to someone who's really active um, like anyone who's developed MECFS, they're not used to resting. They're not used to... No, exactly. And I, I think that's probably the one, even though, again, I went through a bit of a stage where I was like, I can't, like, I can't believe this. Like, what, I've got this weird virus thing, which has caused a kind of... And my sister actually said to me, look, it's something different. You'll recover from it. You just got... And I, I think I just, in, in the end, after like a few weeks, I told myself, look, there's no point being pissed off about it. Just go through, go through the same, you know, process. Yes, it's it's come about in a different you know, different situation. The reasons are different why you get sick. You know, what, what I think why I got sick from COVID, I think it was a different situation to chronic fatigue. But you just have to kind of go, well, is it going to serve me any purpose getting pissed off? No. So I just started doing lots of relaxation. And then as you say, just going out for when I felt up to it, going out for short walks. Because I think the problem is a lot of I see a lot of stuff on Twitter, people talk. Uh, particularly from the kind of long COVID stuff, there's this whole thing about, I get that the anti-graded exercise therapy, I understand because I, I was given that by the NHS when I had chronic fatigue and it, and it didn't work for me either. But there's a lot of kind of almost, I see almost like anti-exercise stuff. And it's like, well, actually exercise is, 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 is one of the main components why I've got better. You just have to do it in the right way, right. which is quite hard to, to, to manage. Yeah. Um, so maybe because I'd had chronic fatigue or a version of chronic fatigue, I mean, I was probably in a good state of mind to, to apply that to to something in the grey area like um, long COVID, because actually I was kind of, well, I've kind of dealt with something like this before. Yeah, something quite left field and a bit kind of hard to work out. As you say, you just need to kind of see what you can do, see how the body responds. Not worry too much if you do too much because you're a bit tired for a few days because you know you'll settle down as long as you don't go out and keep doing that all the time so you end up in peaks and troughs. Yeah. And actually, if you do it in a relaxed way, you know, and you're and you're recovering well in the evening with with rest and all meditation and the rest of it, not looking at screens in the evening and trying to kind of switch off, then you, I think you can just you can gradually pick up. But of course, as with anything, long COVID there's a myriad of symptoms and so it seems to affect people in all all different ways so I didn't have any um as I said apart from the peripheral neuropathy and the um which was pretty horrible anyway but once that had gone I, it was just dealing with a kind of a, a direct fatigue issue there would no other none of the other symptoms I'd had like the horrible poison feeling and nausea backache stomachache and 
susceptibility to cold, all those weird and wonderful things I had with chronic fatigue ME. I didn't have to worry about any of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually people, you know, may not realise, but you are actually a physiotherapist. So you know something yeah, about... Yeah, well, you think, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, you know, and out of interest, have you worked with any patients with long COVID? Uh, not direct. I've not been involved in a... Um, in a service that works with people directly, but obviously you come across people who have had COVID or have long COVID. Um, so in the limited time that you get uh, within an NHS, well, I work for, for Nuffield now, but when in, in the limited time you get in an NHS appointment with a patient, yeah, I, I would have, I definitely gave advice to people about certainly, you know, pacing and kind of relaxation and, and those kinds of aspects. That, that can help so yeah and it, you can see how how much it affects people you know i mean there's still there's still some people unwell now from from when i from when i was unwell so over two yeah. years ago right and actually i remember you saying that you posted some stuff about that long covid and your recovery path um and you got some interesting replies tell us about that briefly yeah, so basically I, I did a review in early 2021, I think, where I kind of like, as I said, I'd recovered from long COVID and I was kind of getting back to doing some exercise um, in the winter. And I kind of worked out that actually the main thing that I wasn't doing in the evenings was relaxing. You know, it was doing a busy job looking at screens all the time. And I was basically coming in and looking at phones and screens and not meditating, not winding down properly. So basically, I just wasn't recovering properly. And then also my my agenda, my look, look, the way I was looking at exercise, you know, treating it too much you know, with too much of an agenda. I just wasn't doing enough to kind of switch off and relax. So anyway, having done this kind of like plan for, I guess, like plan for the year, what can I do to change to get to, to get back to maybe doing more running so I can get back to some of those fell racing events? I had a car, I was like, oh, you know, like, I'll just going to put something on Twitter. It was, I mean, I, I, you know, I have like friends who follow me on Twitter. I don't, I often don't tweet, actually. I tend to just follow things, sport, politics, whatever. And I tweeted a picture of myself fell running pre-chronic fatigue saying something like, you know, recovered from chronic fatigue ME, um, recovered from long COVID and, um, you know, looking forward to do more of this later you know late this year or something like it was a really innocuous tweet I, I didn't even think anything of it and I went out somewhere I can't like did I go out for a drive a day out whatever else I did I, I can't really remember what I did and like I came back and Twitter had like exploded and and a lot of it a lot of people were like oh yeah that's really good great but there was a lot of cynicism like oh here we go here's another here's another charlatan oh look you know and it was like and then I think someone had asked, asked me, oh, what did you do? And I think I'd referenced your, your website, whether I should have done that, I don't know. I can't, but anyway, I, I just said, oh, well, I found this treatment really beneficial. So people then accused me of kind of getting like payoffs from, from people or <laughs> someone, someone said, are you writing a book? I was like, no, it, someone said I, did, I hadn't had long COVID, it wasn't long enough. And it was just this mad kind of like, yeah, yeah. It was quite a good, it's quite an interesting insight into Twitter, but we've discussed this. It, I think there's elements, and I've seen this in other threads relating to chronic fatigue as well, that a lot of people for, in, who have chronic fatigue, and I, I sympathise them because they must have, it's, I know how it affects, how much it affects people. The symptoms I had weren't nearly as bad as probably a lot of those people, but it still had a profound impact on my life. A lot of those people with chronic fatigue don't feel that, that they're listened to. Yeah. But yet they won't listen to people if it doesn't suit their own agenda. So, you know, if they don't understand, if they can't relate to something like someone recovering because they've identified the link between stress. And if that person is looking more at a biomedical model, then they won't listen to you. That's like, well, it's rubbish. You yeah. obviously didn't have chronic fatigue. So it's, it's a kind of strange oxymoron. And there's, I think, a, and I understand a lot of the cynicism as well, but I think a lot of those people, understandably get stuck in a loop a negative loop where all they talk about is oh it's terrible and look at that person they're talking rubbish and my life's terrible and, and I understand it and I get it but I think a lot of those people would actually break out of that circle if they just looked at things differently and that's quite hard to do but you know that's yeah. that's where so it's well, quite an interesting insight into Twitter yeah I must admit you know when if 
you know, if people do kind of respond to something, and I must admit, I'm, I'm less active on Twitter at the moment. Mm. At one point, I was kind of tweeting quite a lot. But, you know, the simple thing I say to people is, well, firstly, if you read a, a book, which you'll, have, you'll be familiar with because I've talked about it, by Professor Robert Sapolsky, who is yeah. um, a neurobiologist at, I think, Stanford University. He's written a book called Why Zebras Don't Get Answers. And in that book, he talks about the fact that there are three types of stress. There's acute physical stress, for instance, getting a virus. There's yeah. chronic physical stress. You know, having an ongoing health issue is an example of that. Or, you know, for instance, living in an environment where you don't feel safe. Mm. And then the third type of stress is what he calls psychological and social stress. Mm. And he says that those three stresses, either in combination or there might be an emphasis on one more than the other, can contribute to making it more likely that you get diseases that... Yeah, like yeah. Now, it might be that there are some people, you know, I, I've had some people on Twitter say, you know, I haven't experienced psychological stress. And I say, well, that's your experience. OK, and that means, you know, this kind of approach might not be appropriate. But I know that I got MECFS because I was experiencing a lot of psychological <laughs> stress. I was doing a job that I really shouldn't have been yeah, doing, yeah, yeah. Um, didn't suit my kind of personality. And I just found it very stressful didn't have the skill set and I it's not something I would choose to do now mm. okay. so you know I just say to people look if you're not if you if you're curious I'd read that book it is quite technical but it'll give you some insights into you know what yeah. might be going on for some people but anyway you know that yeah that was very interesting enough you know just to make very clear um, I mean, I found it curious that you were being accused of being a charlatan because you weren't selling anything, you know. Well, yeah. And the other thing was, if I if I'd gone on to if, if I'd gone on Twitter and said, like, made some outlandish comment that this was the only way to recover or like being very dogmatic about, then obviously you're going to get shot down. But actually, yeah. all I'm saying is, oh, it's, you know, I've recovered from this and this. And actually, I'm looking forward to do something quite. It was essentially a positive, like it was essentially a positive tweet which got like mauled by Twitter. Although there were, there were some people actually, to be fair, who said, oh, that's great. That's really good to hear, you know? And I had made a point in a couple of the comments as I have done on previous interviews with yourself and the guy from long COVID, I forget his name, the physio, that actually my version of, I always call it my version of chronic fatigue because, yeah. you know, I was fairly high functioning, even though it's still, the symptoms had a profound effect physically and mentally on me, you know? Yeah. I didn't run for three years. I didn't do any running clubs, I didn't go out. I didn't socialize a lot. I struggled to get through work every single day for six months. I don't know how I even did it in London. So, but at the same time, you know, there, I know that I appreciate there were always people who, you know, people who are bedridden and things like that. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So fast forwarding to present moment, you mentioned earlier, you're going to be doing um, some fell event. You sent me a video, which looked pretty intense. People running down. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah mountains. So, um, so what? Yeah, I, I, um, so I, I'm one of the, you know, I have a niche in, you know, it's a niche interest in, um, fell running. I mean, they call it hill running in Scotland. It's the same thing, you know, but they're, um, fell running, which is across pre predominantly kind of Northern England, you know, Pennines and but obviously the Lake District is yeah. well known for it. And, and it's what I was doing before. I mean, I, it's part of what I do. And I, my mum's, some of my mum's family are from there. So I've kind of walked on the hill since I was, young so anyway i was fell running before i um before i you know became unwell with chronic fatigue and yeah so i i'm, I'm currently training um in a, in a long block of training um so i've got a race a 17 mile race over the fells when is it three just under three weeks time two yeah. weeks on saturday actually yeah. so about two and a half weeks um but yeah i've completed some i mean i did a 19 and a half mile fell race over the northumberland hills a few weeks ago I did a, 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 a 13 mile race over in the lakes, actually near where I'm going to be doing the one in two weeks, right. um, which goes over Scarfell Pike. And it's predominantly rock and bog and, you know, basically yeah. scrambling through things, trying not to fall over things when you go down. And yeah, I came like, I think I was 20 foot in Great Lakes Fell Race, which is notoriously difficult. Um, I think I was like 21st out, out of 
80 something. I mean, you know, you're never going to get hundreds turning up because it's a bonkers race. Yeah. And I, that took me three hours, 29 minutes. And I mean, I, I ran the Borrowdale fell race route, which I'm doing two weeks on Saturday. Um, the other weekend, I did that in four hours, 45. <laughs> so, Amazing. you know, and, and if you, you know, and obviously I'm training probably at the moment on average six days a week. Most of that is quite easy. Yeah. Um, and I know when to rest. And this goes back to, to the kind of feeling more content. I'm obviously training a lot because I've got a race coming up. But once that finishes, I'll go back to just doing a little bit here and there. But I, I am equally as much as I like pushing it and doing the kind of mad stuff. I'm perfectly happy just taking photos in the valley of a nice place. I don't have to go and yeah. knacker myself. You know, I can do that as well. But, you know, but so I'm just kind of more, more content with it. But I would say I'm probably... You know, if you want to compare where I'm probably close, not that I'm really bothered, but just as a kind of a fun comparison, I'm probably close to 2014 fitness. I'm a bit heftier than when I was. Uh, right. Yeah. I'm a bit more solid. If you yes, want to be. That was eight that. years ago. That was eight years ago. But I'm probably as strong. I'm probably not as fast, but I'm stronger. So yeah. I'm probably actually from a fitness point of view now as a fell runner, I'm probably almost on par with 2014. Amazing. Amazing. So which you can, if you consider what, I mean, I wrote these symptoms down in 2015, post-exertional malaise, poison feeling, sleep insomnia, cold symptoms, throat and nasal, pins and needles in left foot, weakness in the hands, alcohol intolerance, dizziness, mood fluctuations. And that's what I wrote down in 2015, which I kept. Right. Right. There's a whole other myriad. Difficulty word yeah. finding, spaced out, brain fog, sleep disturbance, muscle tremors. So I had like weeks of muscle tremors yeah. weird so that was 2015 so it's just quite interesting to compare that with basically a training blog now which I've been doing since March and that is basically you know where I write my training down and again it's all in a kind of fun relaxed yeah yeah element yeah, yeah. but you know where I rest appropriately but it, just comparing the two is quite interesting well that's that's great to hear and if I'm right is this the same race that Ben has done, Ben is someone you know. Uh, yeah, he won it. He won I it also worked with. He won yeah. it in 2007. Yeah, yeah. I, I won't be winning it, but <laughs> I'm not going to be winning it. But yeah. I, I will get round. And if I can get round in under four hours, you know, uh, great. And I'll get cooked afterwards. And that's what it's about, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if people don't know, I, I interviewed Ben, who also uh, developed chronic fatigue syndrome. And um, there's a video of him on YouTube as well. So yeah, he's, he's, he's a good runner. Uh, and you've got to know him yeah uh, yeah so so what's quite interesting comparing uh sim the types of symptoms um and actually one of his old one of his old club mates steve birkinshaw who's a very well-known fell runner had chronic fatigue after a mad kind of um he did all the 20 214 wainwrights in the lake district in like a week which in itself is bonkers yeah. and then developed a, a kind of just shattered his system and to, so i've I'm, I'm actually good friends with him as well because right. we were comparing symptoms from about 2017 so cool. um, it's been quite interesting getting to know some of these guys who are who are obviously fell runners but just to to, to kind of see how their recovery has gone as well and yeah. compare some of the symptoms you know yeah yeah so yeah so listen keep, keep let us know how you get on in the race good luck yeah, with we'll that. Do. and um right, thank very much thanks again rob you know it's always interesting just to kind of hear your learnings especially because you are a physiotherapist so you've got that kind of perspective as well uh, yeah well i'm still learning still learning yeah. still still learning more about myself and relaxation and stuff yeah so. yeah and that's great because it sounds like you are kind of on a yeah. kind of constant improvement process which is yeah cool so let's pause there because it's a really people might not realize it's a very hot day um <laughs> in a really hot room <laughs> melting and, basically yeah. yeah but thanks again rob and no we'll be in touch Good stuff.